high strength with lightweight, that's always been the promise of metal additive manufacturing. I'm with Frack Miller, who's Director of Communications at Markforge. Frack, I understand that, the, that at Markforge you have a new machine specifically for 3D additive manufacturing. Tell me about it. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so we have the Markforge Metal X 3D printing system. It was announced uh, about a year ago, but last week we started shipping them. And we recently completed our first installation at a company called Stanley Infrastructure which is a division of Stanley Black & Decker, the global yep. tooling industrial company. Um, and the great thing about the Metal X, and one of the things we strove for, is the ability to print strong parts, same day, uh, faster and less expensive than traditional 3D metal printing systems. And we're so happy that we've achieved that. And here we have a couple of parts just to show you. Um, so this is, this is a part that is uh, completed after the centering process. And this is the part that comes out of the wash, and that is absolutely no post-production. And also what we have here, and one of the reasons that we can print parts that are up to 50% lighter than, for instance, cast iron, is we have the ability to do captive infills in the 3D printing system, which is basically like an equilateral mesh inside the part, it makes the part half as light without sacrificing any vital strength characteristics that you would need for functional end use. The thing with metal is that there's demand for it um, in the sense of they need to be able to do it quickly, they need to be able to do it on premises, safely. But there's also that kind of accessibility. And if you look at uh, pretty much any industry, especially software, one of the things that has led to an explosion in software innovation is reducing the barriers to entry. And that can be cost, that can be time to market, that can be reducing the time between iteration cycles. In Markforge, we brought that kind of spirit of you know, the accelerating software industry to hardware. What if you could iterate on hardware the way that web designers and web developers and app developers iterate software in production? So this is the sort of idea of being able to have an idea, print it, have it same day. And if, it, if it's something that you don't if you, if you don't like, then you can just go and print it again. And you still have it, and you're talking about taking uh, an iteration cycle from months to a matter of weeks. That's the thing, is that we've been pouring metal into things for thousands of years, right? And actually, if you look at, uh, um, I'm sure you're familiar with the Tesla, right? I'm sure you're familiar with Ford, the automotive company. Do you know how long it took Henry Ford to bring the first car to market? Five years. You know how long it took Elon Musk to bring the first Tesla to market? five years. So somehow, despite a century of innovation in nearly every other technological thing that we interface with as humans, we are still in the same production cycle as people that were operating you know, with just an assembly line. So that says to me that, that, that this industry, like the entire industry, is ripe for some sort of disruption. Like we, we want this as a, as a society. We want the ability to produce faster. Uh, we want the ability to take ideas and bring them to life bring them into products faster than ever before. Uh, that accessibility element is also, it's time and cost, right? Right now you could take this part or this part and you could have it go out to a machine shop or get it in aluminum. It's gonna take you four to six weeks and it's gonna cost you, you know, according to our research, uh, an average of $1,000 per part versus this printed practically overnight it costs you around $40 a part. To some degree we envision this kind of future of manufacturing where every element of a manufacturing or your factory line is touched in some way by 3D printing. So you have the initial prototyping, then you have the tooling and fixtures. But then once you get to the assembly line, um, it's, it's not, uh, it's not a, a big secret that a lot of assembly lines have large robotic you know, arms that, that help that kind of process. So those, uh, those robots have fingers, effectors, is the industry term. When those things break, you can't do anything. So if you have to then wait four to six months or if you're out of inventory for that part, your factory shuts down. You lose millions of dollars practically overnight. Being able to either front load or react and be able to print that part and have those effectors the next day is a huge shift uh, in being able to maintain your operations. Now you think the Metal XTC this as a production machine, as a laboratory machine, or as a machine you might put, say, in the maintenance shop to make the I think the Metal X definitely belongs uh, in a manufacturing facility, um, on like near the factory line. Uh, it's not. Uh, it's, it's not in the sense of like you're not going to mass produce anything, honestly, with maybe any 3D printer. Um, the purpose of machines like the Metal X and our other lines, like the X7 and the Mark IIs that print carbon fiber um, and continuously reinforce uh, strength of parts, the purpose of that is to be able to have these kind of high value, often complex uh, parts that you know are just uh, oddly shaped to be able to have them instantly and at a cost that allows you to iterate many, many times. Uh, so for metal, uh, things like being able to replace heavy like parts and heavy machinery, like actuators and drive shafts. If you look over to, over to here, we have examples of uh, motorcycle parts, automotive, um, pistons, uh, these kinds of things that you may not need 
40,000 of them. You may just need one, but it's the one part that you do need in order to keep your factory running. Well, with the Metal X, Track Lord of Mark Forge says, iterate your way to high strength, low cost metal additive parts.